What's up, guys? This is Star Blue, a gamer who loves those light games, looter games, and every game that involves build making. There are many strong vocations in Dragon's Dogma 2, but the best quality of life vocation is, with no doubt, Magic Archer. Let me show you how to play as this vocation. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's dive right into it. The first thing of Magic Archer to attract me is its basic tag. It's not only interesting but also quite useful. So let's first talk about the basic tag of Magic Archer. If we consider the shooting of archer as common guns, then the basic tag of Magic Archer should be homing missiles. You take some time to both lock down targets and charge your attack. And then release homing arrows that automatically find their targets. When you are pulling your bow, you will see a lockdown circle. Targets within the circle will be marked by small circles, and within these small circles, you will also see some tokens assigned to each target. The number of tokens indicates how many homing arrows will fly to the target once you release the bow. Naturally, the longer you aim, the more tokens will be assigned. But the total number of assignable tokens is capped. If you exceed the cap, the earliest tokens will be simply disappear, meaning that it's time to release your attack instead of keeping aiming down. This is fine with mobs, but things can get tricky against giant foes. As we know, giant foes consist of multiple body parts, each of which acts as an individual target that can be assigned tokens to. As we also know. Weak spell and non-weak spell damage can be quite different, so you will want to assign more tokens to the weak spell and less to other body parts. So this is the first key point. When fighting giant foes, try to lock down only the weak spell. Now you may wonder, with such a large aiming circle, won't it be hard to do so? Now don't worry, as you can actually switch between a large circle and a small circle. The small circle allows you to aim more accurately, and it can also charge faster. As a result, the large circle has faster charge rate only when you can lock down many targets at the same time. So here's the second key point: use small circle for giant foes, and both aiming circles are reasonable against mobs. Once you master the two key points, you know how to use the basic tag and some skills with the same attack mode. Other skills might utilize different attack modes, but they are rather straightforward. So we'll next move to covering some good skills. Compared to Sorcerer, whose skills are mostly useless, Magic Cutter has quite many handy skills, and almost every skill has its use. But we only have four skills left, so I have to make some tough decisions. Here I only discuss the skills I have chosen for my final build and skip other skills for simplicity. First of all, we have to talk about the master skill. It's pretty insane, high damage and also strong penalty. Considering that it decreases the max health, I only temporarily equip the skill at a campfire and don't have it on me all the time. So, what are the more ordinary DPS choices for Magic Archer in case you are not near a campfire? Personally, I think the basic tag is already enough for mobs, but for giant foes, you do need some skills. And my first recommendation is Sagatad Dampour. This skill is generic, not restricted to any specific elemental weakness, but you have to aim carefully. Of course. Not everyone has the ability to aim well at a moving target, so we need some means for control. You can choose either sleep or frozen. Sleep arrow is better when you do solo, but if otherwise, well, the attack from points will knock the target up the instant it falls asleep, making your control useless. So if you don't want to give up points, frozen arrows are a better choice. With Sagata Downpour and one control skill, you should be able to handle giant foes. So what's next? Of course, I will equip the bouncing arrows. It's it's so fun and and useful in caves or any narrow space. So then I see no reasons not equip it. And what about the last slot? I recommend the ice block skill. 
It's the only good choice for magic archer when you meet a golem. But if you are sure you won't meet such a golem in a given area, you can also choose the fire arrow for AOE, spark chain, or some supporting skills. Here's also some advice for rings and augments. While I don't see any ring that is specifically suitable for magic archer, I hope there could be some rings for status effect accumulation, but well, there isn't. So I can only equip two stamina rings, both max stamina and stamina recovery rate are fine. For augments, the most important one is status effect accumulation from Sorcerer. After that, I recommend subtlety from Thief, weak spot damage from Archer, and max weight from Fighter. Finally, you can select two from the magic tag of Sorcerer, the pawn enhancement of magic archer itself, or some uh, max stamina of archer. In conclusion, I think magic archer is really a versatile vocation capable of various tasks, but it's sad that there are only four skill slots, forcing me to give up many good but well unnecessary skills. If you like my story or want to join me into depth of games, remember to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you around.